Some 8,000 North Korean soldiers are now in Russia near Ukraine's border and are preparing to help the Kremlin fight against Ukrainian troops in the coming days, the Biden administration said Thursday. The new figure from is in dramatic increase from a day earlier, when Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin would only say, some of the troops had moved toward Ukraine's border in the Kursk region, where Moscow's forces have struggled to push back a Ukrainian incursion. That also would mean most of the North Korean troops that the US and its allies say have been sent to Russia are now on the Russia-Ukraine border. The US has estimated there are about 10,000 North Korean troops in Russia. Seoul and its allies assess that the number has increased to 11,000, while Ukraine has put the figure higher, at up to 12,000. Of the 8,000 in Kursk, We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces but we would expect that to happen in the coming days," Blinken said at a news conference with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and their South Korean counterparts. He said Russia has been training North Korean soldiers in artillery, drones and basic infantry operations, including trench clearing, indicating that they fully intend to use these forces in frontline operations. North Korea's move to tighten its relationship with Russia has raised concerns around the world about how that may expand the war and what Russian military aid will be delivered in exchange. It's become a key topic as US and South Korean leaders met this week in Washington, fueling concerns that the presence of those soldiers will further destabilize the Asia-Pacific and broaden Moscow's war on Ukraine. South Korean Foreign Minister Cho Tae-yol condemned the deployment, in the strongest possible terms, and called for an immediate withdrawal of the troops. North Korea's belligerent actions not only places the European continent but also the Korean peninsula under threat and that Seoul agrees to take necessary measures accordingly, he said. There are questions about what new military technologies North Korea might get from Russia in exchange for the deployment and whether it might lead other nations to send their own forces to fight in the war. We now assess that there are some 10,000 North Korean soldiers in total in Russia. And the most <coughs> recent information indicates that as many as 8,000 of those North Korean forces have been deployed to the Kursk region. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days. Russia has been training DPRK soldiers in artillery, UAVs, basic infantry operations, including trench clearing, indicating that they fully intend to use these forces in frontline operations. Should these troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would become legitimate military targets. One of the reasons that Russia is turning to these North Korean troops uh, is that it's desperate. Putin has been throwing more and more Russians into a meat grinder of his own making in Ukraine. Now, he's turning to North Korean troops. And that is a clear sign of weakness. Uh, Russia's been, been suffering some 1,200 casualties a day uh, in the East, more than at any other time during the war. And with the deployment of these North Korean troops to Russia and now to the front lines, this is the first time in 100 years that Russia's invited foreign troops into its country. Our assessment is that Putin's forces have trained these North Korean soldiers in artillery operations, UAV operations, and basic infantry operations, including trench clearing. 
Kremlin has also provided these DPRK troops with Russian uniforms and equipment. And all of that strongly indicates that Russia intends to use these foreign forces in frontline operations in its war of choice against Ukraine. And make no mistake, if these North Korean troops engage in combat or combat support operations against Ukraine, they would make themselves legitimate military targets. So we are consulting closely with our allies and partners in other countries in the region on these reckless developments and on our response. Putin is showing the world another clear sign of weakness. The Kremlin's North Korean gambit just underscores how badly Putin's war has gone and how much trouble he's in. This is the first time in more than a century that Russia has welcomed foreign troops onto its own soil. Secretary Blinken noted, a permanent member of the UN Security Council is violating Security Council resolutions that it agreed to. So at the direction of the President, the United States will continue to surge security assistance to Ukraine, and so will our allies and partners in the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. That includes artillery and air defense, armored vehicles, munitions, and other crucial capabilities. The United States will announce additional security assistance for Ukraine in the coming days. North Korea test launched a suspected new long-range missile designed to strike the continental U.S. on Thursday. The specific long-range missile capabilities North Korea was testing were not known, but the launch was likely meant to grab American attention ahead of the U.S. election Tuesday. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said it detected a ballistic missile launch from North Korea's capital region around 7.10 a.m. and that the weapon flew toward the waters between the Korean Peninsula and Japan. It said the weapon was launched on a high angle and it was suspected of being a long-range ballistic missile. Japanese Defense Minister Gen Nakatani told reporters that a preliminary examination shows the launch could involve a new missile, citing its flight duration of 1 hour and 26 minutes, which he said is the longest for a North Korean missile test. He said the missile landed in waters outside of the Japanese exclusive economic zone but condemned North Korea's nuclear and missile development for threatening the safety of Japan and the international community. South Korea and Japan said they are closely coordinating with the U.S. about the North Korean launch. The United States described the weapon as an intercontinental ballistic missile and condemned North Korea for the launch, saying it violated UN Security Council resolutions and, needlessly, risked raising tensions. North Korea last test-fired an intercontinental ballistic missile in December 2023, when it launched the solid-fueled Wasong-18. はい、え、今後追加すべき情報がありましたら、速やかに発表をすることといたします。あの、飛行時間がですね、C11分に発射をされまして、8時37分頃ということで、1時間27分かかっておりまして、今までにはない。1時間26分 
分かって、1時間26分かかってますので、まあ、今までの,あのこの飛行時間よりは超えてますので、えー、そういう点も含めて分析をしております。